welcome to the Master Slave Lifestyle Podcast. Here we'll interview real people living the real Master Slave Lifestyle, all consensual and all in different ways. And in this episode... So they have hierarchies within them, they play with each other, they have, uh, well, sometimes they play out of the family, so there are a lot of options. With a kinky family, it's kind of, we have um, different partners in the family and all partners are kind of linked to each other. This is masterslavelifestyle.com. Hello everyone. So a few months ago, we had a dominant called Dan that appeared on the podcast. He enjoyed the experience so much, he asked if he could come back as he had more to share. So it's with a really warm welcome, I'd like to thank Dan for coming back. Hi, Dan. Hi, Phil. So we were talking before this and we were trying to find a theme that we wanted to speak about for this. And what kind of came out was this idea of kinky family and let's say having a polyamorous relationship. Um, Could you give a bit of an introduction about that um, for for people, please? Yes, sure. As you might know from the last podcast, uh, I'm having a husband. We are married for five years and we are together for 14 years. And um, it's actually an open relationship. We started from the beginning with an open relationship and we never let somebody really deep into our relationship. This actually changed a few um one year, two years ago, something like that, around that time, that we got um, a person, well, he was very open-minded, he was interested, we both liked him, and it started that they developed something next to, um, let's say, the normal get to know each other, getting into contact, playing around or something. And here we already had a kind of, uh, we started with kind of a master slave thing, but we also had kind of a hierarchy based on knowledge difference. So he came to me with a curiosity to learn. And this was kind of the starting of our, yeah, our relation. And um, I was a teacher, I was a coach, I was working with him. Um, technically in the beginning on a very distant basis. I mean, I do this also as a job, so generally not getting too deep into um, relation with the people. And um, yeah, but after a while, it all turned out that there was maybe something more than just these coach and coachee situations. So uh, I introduced him also um, to my husband. And yeah, then it made this click and something really cool turned out of this and today it's not only him we are having even another person in our kinky family and uh, they two are now together a couple and um, we can really have this concept of a family now in our polyamorous relationship And for people that um, might not have come across this term before, so a polyamorous relationship is that you have more than one one partner or more than one one relationship. Um, This can be that you have, let's say, this idea of a primary relationship, which is your partner. You can also have secondary and tertiary relationships. A relationship might be based on sex. It might be based on love. It might be based on holding hands and walking down a beach you can basically create the relationships you want and um, they can all have very different things. Could you explain how a kinky family fits into a polyamorous kind of structure? Uh, Sure. Um, Polyamory generally you understand as having a person more than one lover. Um, This can be on different levels, like there can be more lovers on one level or they can like be a main partner and uh, sub partners um, or some partner just fulfill um, some aspects of the relationship and some other partners fulfill other uh, aspects of that. With a kinky family, it's kind of we have um, different partners in the family and all partners are kind of linked to each other. Um, and the aspect of love, like love between uh, two husbands, um, 
is one level and then there's also love to the other family members which can be completely based on other aspects um, one element i already explained a little bit before is that these that there's a kind of hierarchical situation which is not only like a ds relation it's also like kind of a student and his teacher or a coach and his coachee so you have here like also a learning hierarchy that uh, some people learn something from the others which is kind of an element you find in any family so generally the children learn from their parents and in some ways it's here similar so we have here that somebody's taking care he's uh, i'm a caregiver in the family um, but i'm also asking and demanding from from other family members that they behave in a specific way that they are willing to learn that they support the family in some ways and i think these elements are all elements you find also in a classical family and uh, we transfer this to in the kinky family concept we transfer it to a more um yeah, to, to a more kinky environment. It's a chosen family. So you choose your family members. You have a strong um, relationship and intimacy with the family members. Um, but yeah, it's not the same like with, uh, all, not all family members have the same structure and um, all not all the relations are on the same level. What makes it a family for you? I think a family is something which holds together. You can't choose a family. Well, we could at least once, but after once you decided to be part of this family, you also have to stick with the bad side of somebody. It happens very often that if you are in the environment of friends, they are changing, they come and go just because they do something stupid or something like that. The time makes it a little bit more difficult to see the other members and in the kinky family, it's like a strong commitment you bring to each other. And this commitment also goes from both sides. Like you have some people who teach, educate and develop the other ones. In this case, the younger ones. And on the other side, the younger ones, they have to recontribute to the family in their own way. Um, but also remain with the family, work with the family, work with the rules. So. Um, I think the core element is that you are really taking care about each other family member. There's an English saying that came to my mind as well, that blood is thicker than water, you know, and it's often used yes. to describe family. And I, I suppose for polyamorous family that you've chosen each other, you're also choosing that your blood is thicker than water, you know, to go through thick yes. and thin. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably the concept which stands, which stands behind. And uh, that's also what you have to learn because um, you probably learn it from your family, your genetical family. But with the kinky family members, a lot of the family, uh, a lot of the work you have within the family is to make the people understand that this is nothing you just do randomly. So having this nice wine is something uh, which, well, pops up all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm going to meet some friends here and there and do this and that. And um, yeah, then you have to say like, oh, that's cool that you want this. But today it's family time and you should do this family call together now. And uh, you have to take care about the other family members. And that's then what the people often forget. So you have to keep this in mind and you have to remind them about that element as well. That, that there's this responsibility that comes with it. Yes, exactly, exactly. So as you're talking about this, I think a lot of gay men who are listening have probably can associate very much with choosing your family. I think a lot of us do that. A lot of us support people more than perhaps um, other, other people might um you know yes. I, like i have a friend here who doesn't have any family and i'm part of his his chosen family so when he's ill i'm one of the people that looks after him you know there are others yes. as well and um, what i'm kind of wondering with this is okay what makes a normal let's say gay chosen family and then what makes it a kinky family if you have like this uh, a very strong concept of this gay family, it's kind of similar. 
but you have kinky elements in this. So it's not like you're all gay. I mean, we are not even all gay. Um, two of our family members are, one is at least bisexual and the other is pansexual. Um, the, the core element is the kink. So for us, it's not based on that we are different because we are gay. It's we are different and we are like kind of stick together because we have a similar understanding of king fetish that we share um, that we share elements of this and this is also a strong element of learning within the family so the rules and all these things they are based on the knowledge that we are kinky that we are slaves we are master we are puppies we are um role players in some way we do bondage we do risky situation we do we have some pain slots within um some do fisting so there's a lot of stuff um which is probably um well maybe you wouldn't call your mom or tell your mom or maybe not even tell your gay family um which is just normal for us as a normal topic on the other side other elements which are not that kinky um still go within the concept so it's not that we exclude then the other elements we cannot say that it's only the kink element it's also the kink element and this is um yeah the family aspect again so we are kinky and that's like we are a kinky family but we are still a family and both elements um are let's say on an equal level in the family and uh, how how does the power dynamics come into a kinky family um, so in the previous episode of you, you kind of said you were a um, dominant. So how um, does this work within within the kink family dynamic? Well, first of all, um, we have in the kinky family, we have some hierarchy. Um, the hierarchy is not fixed except of my role in the kinky family. And I'm not a versatile. So for me, I can't change my role. Um so everybody except that I'm kind of the family head, the patriarchat, however you might call Patriarch. it. Patriarch. Patriarch. Yeah. Um, the master, you can call it however you want, the owner, the handler. And we were also like thinking, oh, uh, maybe we are just a pack and uh, like a, pup, a pack of puppies and I'm just the owner of that pack. And then we thought like, no, because it's not me who is always opening uh, the food for the dogs. It's me who is taking care about their um, really needs in life. So and this was like one element and this power dynamic remains. So I was the master of all of them, or I am the master of all of them in some ways, um, which is also, let's call it on a very wide concept because I'm master in different levels here. And um, I'm also the uh, pat- pronouncing correct, pat- the patriarch. 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 The patriarch. I should have practiced that a few times before. <laughs> so it, 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 it's one of those terrible English-German things. <laughs> patriarch. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, in some ways, I'm the patriarch of the family, and uh, that's also power dynamic, but I'm also the master, the owner, the handler, the husband, um, the, yeah, the big brother who is taking care about the issues. So I have many roles within the kinky family. So does does this give you energy to do that or, or does it also tire you? I can imagine some people going, oh, that's a lot of work. Well, it's in both ways. Um, if I would say these are all my puppies, you can say, oh, that's a pack. They are just playing with each other, which is also the case. So they have hierarchies within them. They play with each other. They have, uh, well, sometimes they play out of the family. So there are a lot of options where they can have their own entertainment. So I'm not the one, the the owner of the harem who has to uh, take care about all of them all the time. Um, On the other side, uh, it definitely gives a lot of energy uh, to know that I'm taking care, that I'm responsible, that I see how they develop, uh, that I see how they maybe also develop their fetishes how they get deeper into the community, how they meet friends with me, how they enjoy similar stuff like I do. So uh, we have a strong development of the family members here. And that's also something which makes me proud and where I feel, wow, okay, that's so cool. Um, I enjoy to see this and see how they develop. Um, But yes, it can consume a lot of energy as well. 
because if there's a problem with one of them, I have to take care about this. If there's a problem between two of them, uh, it can be even worse. I mean, it's probably still one problem, but if they have two separated problems, I have to take care about both of the problems. On the other side, the people can still um, look at each other. So they can, if I'm not free, they can ask uh, for help with someone else from the family. And um, it's not that I'm the only one. So I think that's also the difference to being the master only, and you have to be responsible for everything to being uh, the patriarch, to um, just give a frame, to support the people, um, to give them maybe new ideas, new thinkings, if they can't forward within their own structures, and then kind of let the things happen as they can in some ways. So, so um, to uh, say that back, it, it, it sounds like one of the key things that gives you an energy with this is seeing the growth and the um, development of people within and the family and seeing, seeing their sort yeah. of journey. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's one element. There are also other elements which give me a lot of energy from the family. But I think this is the one of the main aspects to see that they get really happy and uh, yeah, that they can proceed with what they want to do. And um, you were just talking about that there there can be issues. So could you kind of give some examples or, or say um, how you approach dealing with issues within within the Kink family? Yeah, there was, for example, one of our family member was in, in a relation when he came into the kinky family, so not within the family, but with an, an external uh, part. This uh, external partner uh, became part of the family, but then there came some issues between them two, uh, be, between the two. So they had, um, yeah, they had some stuff, or a lot, let's say a lot of stuff where we had to talk about, where we had to think about. And as both were part of the family at that time, um, we had to deal with the whole, or I had to deal with the situation from both perspectives. Um, so they had the time when they talked with each other. And in that situation, there was uh, a hierarchy within their relation as one was much longer part of the family than the other. So it was really clear uh, where I kind of have to give the strongest support. But as the other one was still part of the family, I couldn't say, oh, you're right and you're wrong and you're kicked out or something. It's like um, you have to make sure that they find a way how they come along well and then afterwards to find solutions for the family. Is he still part of the family? Does he want to go out by himself? Which in that situation was the case, so the problem solved by itself. Um, but the time was, let's say, it was a development and my task was to clarify how these problems uh, will be solved in the end and to clear the thoughts of the family members. Do you have any sort of boundary or line where you kind of expect someone else to solve the problem or take responsibility and where you take responsibility or will help? Is there kind of a line there? Mm, there are some things where I can't um, take responsibility. So things which are out of my reach, that's always a problem. doesn't mean that I can't support here. So often it's just um, bringing structure to the mind of the people, which is the really needed um, element. Um, but if it goes to, let's say, um, somebody has to make a decision for himself, like, for example, does he want to stay with a with his boyfriend or not. It's not a decision I can do as a family um, head. It's something he has to decide or they have to decide for themselves. And these decisions are always have to be made by the members themselves. Also, if they now want to change something in the hierarchy or if they feel like, oh, um, I have some contact over there or something, that's some elements where I don't want to influence them too strong. Um, on the other side, I want to protect the family all the time. So I set limitations to the behavior of my family members that I can keep control over the elements I can keep control of. And these elements are, um, for example, with whom they are allowed to play or are they allowed to play with strangers? How well do they know them? 
what to take care about if they play with these people. And here are, uh, or these are areas where I set clear limits, where I say, okay, this is allowed, this is not allowed. Um, inform me before. Generally, I'm a person who's then allowing the people um, to do whatever they want, but I want to be informed and um, I want to have the last word in the case that I say, no, I don't feel happy in the moment with this or that. Um, don't do this, do it maybe another time or uh, let's talk about it again. So yeah, I try to support, but I can't uh, all the time. Uh, but in the kink elements, I'm really trying to to keep them safe and happy, um, not make them all the mistakes. Well, I did. <laughs> So, so um, you mentioned this word protection. So, um, how 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 do you protect without blocking them? That's a really difficult question because uh, it might feel for you that you have to protect them, but on the for them it feels like I'm blocking them. Um, I'm really aware about that point. Um, for me, it's uh, it's a really, really thin area where I can work. So I try to keep limitations as low as possible so that there's not a big um, probability that I block just anything. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there are elements where I block them. And as you might know from any other family rules, there's always somebody who's breaking the rules. <laughs> and that's also what the family members sometimes do. So even if I tell you, you're not allowed to do this or not allowed to do that, um, if they feel like they have to do it now in this or that way, um, well, it's, it's nothing which makes me happy in the end, um, but it's sometimes the correct way also to do this. But it should be done in a discussion. So I prefer if they come to me and say, oh, you said I'm not allowed to do this. Can we make an exception here? And that way is working fantastically for me. Uh, on the other side, I just have to punish them because otherwise my rules will not be seen as strict rules. So you can ask me if this we can make an exception with the rule. But if you just um, punish the boundaries, um, then yeah, I have to do something because otherwise everybody would do just how they feel. So, so, so there is, let's say, this this framework of rules which are there and they are enforced as part of the kinky family. Uh, again, please. Um, so, 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 so there is this almost like let's say framework or the rules for the family or in the household, and they are yeah. enforced in order for them to be real in, in, in order for it to be a kinky household. Yes, ex exactly. So it's, uh, we, we have some artifacts and processes developed, which are uh, yeah, kind of a continuing element. Like we have family meeting. We talk about this family meet uh, in, in this family meeting once a week. So we just talk about the issues we had, what's coming up and so on. Um, there are some, uh, holidays we plan together so we make sure that we see each other on a regular basis. We are living all in long distance uh, relationships so that's why the meeting is via Zoom and we need holidays to meet us and uh, then we try to really find and plan this time together so that we have the time for the family and um, yeah, really keep it a family and uh, stick to each other. Do, do you only meet up all together or do some of you meet up without other people, depending on who's available? Uh, we can meet in any constellation we want. Um, so, for example, my husband and I, we meet as much more uh, on, on a much regular basis uh, than the others. And the others, as they are also a couple, they also try to meet extra time because they don't want to have time with us. Well, then they're disturbing other family members, maybe. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> we don't disturb, but um, yeah, it's, it's clear that they want to have time for themselves and uh, they shall have their time for themselves. So um, we also trying to take ourselves back, even if we are uh, the four of us, then everybody needs the time with the other and want to enjoy the uh, time with the other, maybe on a one on one basis sometimes. And uh, it's important that the family, that the other family members respect that each combination uh, within the family needs its time to, yeah, to be maintenance, to be happy, to enjoy the time together. 
and you mentioned, for instance, this weekly kind of meeting. Is this just to discuss issues or, or is it also other things as well? Well, it's depending. For me, for example, um, it's majorly making sure that the family is fine and happy and everybody gets a connection and also well, to see the other family members. So it's like, for me, a strong ritual. Um, some other family members use it more for, let's say, um, other aspects of kink. Can you give an example? Uh, yeah, like they make then like uh, some Zoom sessions afterwards or they play with each other or they sometimes also just um, yeah use the room that like they have some hypnose games. So they have some trigger uh, which they set on each other and then uh, one is getting horny during the family dinner. <laughs> but can't use it or can't open his mouth or something. And um, yeah, then they maybe sometimes have friends invited and then they uh, introduce some friends to, to the other family members. So yes, they we can use it in multiple ways. Um, but majorly the goal is to, to keep also the ritual and the, the aspect of feeling linked to each other also on the long distance um, alive. And it's really important um, I realized I have, uh, well, we all have our own lives. And uh, I just during the last weeks, so there was Folsom here in Berlin, and I had some other private issues, and there was a lot of stuff to do. And probably if you wouldn't have set this fixed date, I wouldn't take the time for my family. So just setting this date once a week is so important that you know, okay, here's at least one hour with your family. And if you feel happy talking for ages, then you can continue talking. Um, but the real quality time is when you see each other, when you have you in your arms and you can hug for, for hours and cuddle Aww. and do these things. So, um, yeah, or play or whatever. So there are many other things than cuddling and hugging. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, but that's, um, it, it's keeping the maintenance of the family is, uh, is so important with the regular uh, dinner basis and, and and how often do you tend to meet up as a group is it like every month or you know once a year how um how um regular do you all try and meet up together well if we could it would be probably more than once a month we would probably live together and have a great time together but uh in a realistic way we try to see us um let's say four to six times a year. And then we try to keep it a little bit longer. Sometimes it's less than than four times a year. Um, it's really depending to how the situation with all the individuals is going and how the environment, like their uh, life uh, out of the family um, is demanding them. So, for example, one guy, he just uh, started a new job and um, then he said, like, oh, I can't see you now for half a year. Um, well, but since he started his new jobs, he came to Berlin now two times and probably we see us three times, four times. So we try to make it happen. And then it randomly happens that we see each other more often and not less. And that's really, um, I think, what makes the, the motivation behind the family that you really want to see the others you want uh, you know that you belong to the others and that you're like uh, one family and then it can work out in the end. And um, as we're recording this, the BDSM book club, we've actually been reading The Ethical Slut, which is, let's say, the Bible on polyamorous relationships. And one of the things that, that made me smile reading it this, this second time we're from the book club was, was them going that if you can crack it and doing well, you'll find one of your constraints is time and scheduling and it's how do you have the time to see ev ev everyone and how much you can schedule things in to make sure that it all works well yeah i mean that's technically why we have these these concepts of seeing each other together why we are having the the concept of the dinner of the family dinner and uh, it's also that we don't make limitations. So you're not allowed to see the others or you're not allowed to do this or that. Um, but everybody on the same time has to see the family on one of the highest priorities. And then it's working out.
You're listening to Master Slave Lifestyle. You can support the podcast and website through the Patreon membership. Go to masterslavelifestyle.com slash support for more information. And you can also support us through the new shop. Go to masterslavelifestyle.com slash shop to find out more. You're listening to Dan, who's talking about his kinky family. Is is the family dinner the same as the Zoom call, or is it something different? Yes. Is this the same thing? Oh, cool. I, I, um, so, so, so you're all actually eating a meal uh, as you're talking with, with each other. This was the original idea, but at the moment, nobody's eating anymore something. <laughs> Anyone eating from a dog bowl? <laughs> <laughs> well, it can happen. <laughs> and it already happened. <laughs> Lucky person. Yeah, so no, that's... Uh... That was the original idea, but we got over it uh, as we realized that some were then eating with uh, some other friends or that they had hunger before or that they have to leave early or, well, you know, whatever happens with the family, there's always some other things around which take their um, attention. Thank you. Um, so um, a- another question I have. So what tactics do you use or do you have in order to make sure that everyone gets gets along? Mm. The core tactic is uh, to give them freedom. So everybody can decide by themselves uh, what's the best for, for him in that context and give them the opportunity to develop this but this means um that uh yes sometimes they need a partner for this sometimes they need a dom for that element for example um so they must also communicate what they need and it's very often the case that subs or slaves um select oh no i'm very happy but actually they want something they want to be punished or they want to be ordered or some of these elements um and this is a tricky part uh, if you don't give this uh, as as a dom because in that case i'm also the family member taking care um but also they they see me as the master and these two sides sometimes uh, yeah, you have to feel it, you have to see it, you have to discuss it, because a lot of the family members don't communicate it clear that now I I, I want to have a session again with you, let's do this or that. Um, on the other side, if I communicate this, most of the time it works out for me, um, but it can also happen that then they say, oh yes, I have to follow the order, um, but then they realize, oh no, actually I'm not in the mood today. So it needs a lot of communication, it needs a lot of talking, and you also have to feel how the the situation is going because sometimes they just don't want to talk that much about it. That's really interesting. So you somehow need to divine or figure out when when the the slave or the other family member wants something, needs something, but they're not able to communicate it. Yes. Um, you can say it in this way that everybody in the family has a role, um, but the role can be changing. So, for example, sometimes they are pets, sometimes they are slaves, sometimes they are uh, lovers, sometimes they are um, trainees, coaches or whatever. And these roles, they they change all the time. So you have to figure out when which role is the or which role is the most dominant at the moment. And also for yourself, you have to figure which out which role you want to see yourself at the moment. And uh, then you have to make a, make a good fit or a good matching. And it can, I mean, it also happens that uh, someone is like really needy in some direction and uh, tries to find someone and nobody's in the mood for that. Yes. So it can happen as well. And uh, well, sorry for you so that's that's a really bad situation but it i think it happens once but often there's somebody else then who's in the mood to join into this or that thing if somebody want to talk nobody want to talk well there was probably one who wants to talk in the end and if somebody is horny he finds someone who's also horny or can get horny 
So um, having four people or five people, um, I mean, the family was was five in the biggest. Um, this can really um, yeah, lead to a situation where you find what you just need. It's um, this kind of links with another question I wanted to to ask you. Um, you know, how do you do what's best for the family rather than what's best for you? Mm. I th think the core element is your own mindset. If you take a position where you um, where you think for the other. Um, and you get something out of that, that you do something positive for the other, um, then you're in the right mindset to get something for you and the other as you think what's the best for the other person. So there's only a few situations where I would really say that the best for the others is in contrast to what's best for me or what I want in this situation. And... Um, well, even though I'm the, the master, uh, the patriarch or the owner or whichever role, um, I can't take whatever I want from my family members because otherwise, I mean, maybe they would like to give it to me, but then they're like kind of pissed off afterwards or like they're not really happy with this. And this would lead to, let's say, a more difficult or more problems afterwards. So it's more often the case that I just say like, Okay, um, well, I'm really in the mood for A, B, or C. I don't get what I want. Um, shit, um, let's try tomorrow. It uh, sounds like there's, um, like, like in order for your needs to be met, you need to make sure that the needs of the people that are s submissive to you are also being met. And that, and and that from what 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 you're saying in um, the previous question, you almost need to have this empathy or knowledge to know what's going on with them, even if they're not able to communicate it. Is that a good summary? I I think it is, and I wouldn't say that it's. I mean, it's in any DS relation that if the dom want to fulfill his own needs, he also have to know what are the needs of the sub because otherwise he probably can't get his own needs done so um i mean the dom is still depending on the sub as well so we are not in this one way only direction we are always in two ways and probably in the family it's a little bit stronger that that it goes in more than one direction and at least the two way is much stronger also from the downside because you as the owner as a patriarch really take care and benefit of the um of what's best for your yeah for your family okay thank you because it, I, I imagine some people there is this myth that the master does what they want and gets what they they need you know and 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 it you know what what i'm hearing with you and what i'm hearing with some of the previous people that have spoken as well is that actually that is not true it is a myth that you, yes it is yeah i mean it can be working to a certain point but i wouldn't do it with the family so for example um some some people have these uh, fantasies of oh yes they just serve the dom in any way and if they are horny in this fucking situation where they probably do anything the dom asks them to do and well if you are dating them in that situation probably you get whatever you want in that situation so the question is um are you in such a situation that you can be an arrogant asshole dom who just takes whatever he wants or do you want to see this and beat this person afterwards again? And here in a family, you can't, you definitely can't say that you don't want to meet the others again because, well, you're family, so you will. Yeah. Okay. Life together. <laughs> so, 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 the more long-lived a relationship isn't going to be, the more that you need to take each other's needs into account. Yes. And also sometimes, really sometimes, I didn't experience that, but I heard about it, um, is that some doms 
really can do more and more after a while. But I mean, I can also do more, like all the family members can do more with other family members than externals or strangers. Um, but I know some relations where really the sub has no uh, or nothing to say about it anymore. But I still know that the Dom takes care about it. Yes. So even though he doesn't is not allowed or he doesn't want to, or he takes himself so much back, um, there is still this concept that there's at least something in return and that the Dom takes care about this. But as I said, um, I only know I think one relationship where this is Probably, I'm not what it happens, not even 100% sure if it is the case. Probably, it is. it might be the case. Let's call it that way. Um, how do you go about introducing someone new into a kink family? So, do you have an approach or some principles? Yes. Um, technically, the way must go over me. So if I'm not happy with the person, um, it's it's a no-go. Um, the problem is it's kind of the same with all the other members. So if one of the family members says, oh, I'm not comfortable with this person, um, this person wouldn't get in either. So if somebody new wants to get into the family, it's really the case that everybody in the family has to accept this new person and um, I think this is a really, really difficult way. And it's not only on one level that this person must be a fit, it's on multiple levels. So, for example, if someone is just very kind and a cool person and um, maybe looks sexy, whatever. So everybody says like, oh, yeah, he's really nice. And I like to talk with him and spend time with him. But it's not a sexual match. Then, hmm. Also, if there's not this inner feeling, like if you if you're in a rela- or if you get into a relation of any kind with somebody, you know that there's some click somewhere. And if you don't have this click with this person, then um, where shall it lead? It can't lead anywhere. So it's maybe, oh, yeah, I have some, some time sex with this person and then afterwards he's gone again. So there must be, okay, yes, you really have to see on this person, but also on our side, the wish to integrate this person stronger in our family. And uh, that's, I think, a really, really important step. If it doesn't match for all of the people or for some aspects, this doesn't mean that this person can't, let's say, get close to the family. Not at all. The person can get really close. So you can say it's an extended family or it's a crowd around the family or whatever. So... For example, if there's, um, uh, you have like, or we have like a very, very cool trans person or uh, technically non-binary to fluid. Um, and he is uh, with one family member, really, really strong and everybody else really, really like him. So we can say he's very, very close to our family, but he's not within the core. Yeah. He probably would get in the core because he has, uh, for many other family members, he has not the needed attributes. I've um, always had this image in my mind about like the sun and the planets in orbits, and you've got like the inner planets and the outer planets, and yeah. that from what you're saying, the kink family sort of the inner planets, but you know, someone could be um, Jupiter or Saturn, you know, yeah. one of the outer ones that they're close, but not, but not super close. If you want to stay with the family image, you have probably a family which lives together. So they are like really the core family. And then you have like an uncle or an auntie or a niece or something, which is still part of the family, but it's not part of the core family. And you don't live with this person together. You don't share all your aspects with that person. And I think this de- describes how we also work with people who are close to our family, but not in the uh, in, in the core family. And um, yeah, so we invite them. We have a great time with them. We're going to visit them and we take care about them. But um, I would say it's, yeah, it's on, a, it's on another level. And on a personal level for one family member, they can be really on the same level like I am or like any other family member is. 
Um, but for the whole family as a, as a construct, they are uh, a little bit more separated. Can you um, have it that people can click with a new family member in a different way? So, so for some people, it's very, let's say, sexual and emotional, but for someone else, it's more emotional. And would they still be welcome as part of the family inside the house? Or does everyone have to connect in um, the same sort of way for it to work? I mean, we have different ways of connection within the house or the, the family house. Um, so there can be also a concept that somebody in the family house um, sees himself only as the pet of the family that technically can be working. Um, so this person might be on another level than the other family members, which are, I would say they are versatile. They are sometimes fighting about hierarchy. They do many stuff with each other and maybe this person would see himself only in one specific role in the family and so he can be part of the family um, if it fits for all but he would only remain in that role in regard to the family okay um, as, as I was thinking through these questions, there was also um, a story that came up in, in my mind, like I've seen with other, let's say, kinky families and someone new is going to come in. And of course, it can be this amazing thing to suddenly link into this, to this constellation of people. And I have seen sometimes people almost don't see some of them the other issues. So, so for instance, with them, one example, um, some of the people worked different shifts. And so there was this rule that they would always get up for breakfast, even if it was 3 a.m. in the morning. And someone kind of came into the family, um, you know, but then just couldn't cope with these kind of changing times of getting up just for an hour to say hello to the family, you know, so it was nothing to do with the sex or the connection, but just the, the scheduling of them um, everyday life it was only when they were there, they suddenly realized I just can't do this, you know, and they then had to, to kind of back out again. Um, have you come across this or do you have any kind of thoughts about this? Mm, I mean, we had the one person who had the step back as uh, after he broke up with one of our family members. And um, for him, he also then felt like, no, nah, he doesn't feel like part of the family. He doesn't feel like uh, too strongly linked, which was an impression which also some other family members shared so yes having the step back definitely exists and can exist but the question is and um, also like if you want to get into the family uh, we said that everybody has to kind of accept this and think this is great but it doesn't happen from now to another second it took a long time so you can also say that this uh, member was not yet full family member because he didn't felt that he was there yet in the end. So um, you have to see that it's your decision to get into, it's the family decision to accept you, and then you have to grow with each other and develop with each other. And if this doesn't take place, um, you're technically not part of the family. Yeah. If you develop yourself into another direction or if you don't want to develop yourself with the family, that well sorry you are not not the family that's fascinating because what i'm hearing there it's not like there's a binary you're now in or you're not in or you're being considered or not it's actually like a tra transition and you're slowly moving from one stage to another and then you're moving to another stage and to another stage it, it's, it's 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 kind of like um a journey it, it's it's it's, it's, yes. it's not just a binary thing yeah, but I wouldn't even call it stages because this would say, oh, we have five levels. And if you're on level five, you're a full family member. It's more like uh, you walk with us. We, the family walks away in life. And um, yeah, you can walk some time with the family. You can uh, step out of the family. You can walk into another direction at one crossing. But it's not like you go deeper and deeper in the family. It's like when you're in the family, um, you're technically in. 
and then it's depending if you want to and if you can develop yourself with a family and um, out of this concept that you are not in or out that you're that you're just taking a journey um, and the family motivation is that you want to do this journey for a long time together and even if you make decisions where you go a little bit uh, let's say on a more distant uh, position to your family you still link to the family and you still have this feeling and the family has still the feeling but if you say oh i'm turning around or go completely another direction it's also a decision but then you're kind of getting out of the family and then you're out in the end and the motivation is that you don't want this and this is what you have to feel and also the family have to feel and uh, it can happen anytime so a family even though the goal is that it remains long um, the concept is a family is uh, from when you're born until you're dead um, it won't be probably not the case because we were not born together and well we will probably not uh, die together um, so they develop in their own directions but keeping in mind that you're part of this family that your family member this is the goal which we uh, what we want to remain yeah probably until the day we die Oh my God, I'm getting romantic. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, thank you for what you said about the stages as well. I think it's a good point that um, if someone is doing lots of stages, be a little aware. You could be dealing with someone that's trying to create a cult or has a cult mindset. So um, uh, that's not true all of the time, but please do be aware of that because there are some bad actors on the scene that do it. What do you mean with that? So um, with cult mind control, um, quite often you set all of these stages that people have to go through. And by setting all these challenges, by the time people are, are trying to get through to the final stage, they're so desperate to become part of it, they just join Ooh. it. But often so with sex or cults, when you break in what's there no. is normally not what was presented to and um, begin with but by this point it's too late so um yeah. that's yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I i you just wanted to mention that to people because i've mentioned this stages and that was yeah. a very bad term that i'd used so yeah no okay yeah here i really can just repeat that uh, core of the family is just the wish of you and the other family members that you're linked together and you don't have to prove yourself if you and the family decided that you want to get together there is no um, need to whatever have sex with all the family members or if you don't feel like having sex um, that's completely okay there are some who have really close to no sex at all and that's completely cool um, I mean, there are some members who didn't even have sex at all, I think. Um, but uh, this is really something which is not... Um, nobody in the family can force you to do something except of stay with the family. But the family has to respect you and you respect the family. And that's like how it is and that's how it works together. And uh, it's not like a challenge or that you are like, oh, you have to do this and that. Um, the family supports you and you get support uh, or you give support to the family and the other way around but it's no rules no forces in that direction that you have to do something against your will or where you think like oh i actually wouldn't do this or that so that's really not the case and as i said it's uh, sometimes even the family members are breaking the rules i just <laughs> said and just meant to bring the best for them and the family and they are now not getting bad punished uh except of that they want to get punished maybe in some ways but that's something else so um just before we finish is there anything else that you'd like to say about this mm, i think having a family is something which is really really adorable and which gives you so much strength and energy and it doesn't matter if it's now a kinky family a gay family or um let's say you're a genetic family you're really strong with um it's so important that you have this family and that you can support 
or that you get support from your family um, and give support to your family. It's important, I think, that this family includes all elements of you, which definitely includes your king side, your fetishes, your dreams, your desires. And um, so for me, the kinky family was a dream. I fulfilled for myself now with these members. And I think that the members of the family, they also get a lot out of this uh, concept. And um, I know that a lot of people also from extern, they want to get in. And uh, no, we don't have many steps so that they can get in. It's just like if it's a match or not. So if you find somebody where it's a good match for you, um, you can just start your own kinky family and you can be a master, you can be a sub, you can be a slave, you can be a puppy, you can be the housewife, a cross-dresser, whatever. The kinky family is what makes a family for you. Everybody in the family should be accepted and should be taken as he, she, they is. And I think that's the concept of a family that you support without judging your family members. And uh, that's something we are really missing in this world or in the communities and scene. So um, that's what you should. That's what everybody needs, I think. Everybody yes. needs a family. Um, I mean, thank you so much for this. It's It's been really interesting kind of talking to you and finding out more about this. Um, for, for me, I think one of the things I'm going to take away from this is, is the idea of the kink family allowing you to live in different ways. I kind of just love, love that kind of um, framing. So thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for this interview. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. And... Um... Yeah, get your kinky family. If you'd like to be interviewed by me or know someone who would, you can get in touch with me at the email contact at masterslavelifestyle.com. You can now support the podcast, website and Master Slave community through Patreon membership and receive benefits such as early access to the podcast, exclusive video workshops and more, along with my thanks for supporting me. There is now a free download to help you take the next steps in the Master Slave lifestyle, suitable for both beginners and those who want a full-time relationship. Check out the show notes for more information on both. And if you're interested in finding out more on the 24-7 Total Power Exchange lifestyle, go to the website at masterslavelifestyle.com for more information. Thank you all for listening.